seven in my pocket I am a healing prophet Sees a promise in my garden I need to have a soft and sexual experience all right, guys, so spring is here, and this is the time that I like to work on my exotic mushroom types. The temperature is on the rise, and that means higher humidity levels outside where I live at here in the south. I've cloned a few exotic mushroom fruits to agar, and I am going to be knocking up liquid cultures with that genetic material. This picks up from where we left off last time, where I told you guys all about breaking, shaking, and redistributing your myceliated grain with agar as the starting point. But liquid cultures, if done properly, can produce the same results, if not better results. If you guys purchase your liquid cultures from around the internet, I sincerely hope that that continues to work out for you, but a 5AM mycologist primarily does this work himself. And that work is exactly what we're going to be doing today, but we're gonna make it a little bit more interesting by comparing Dr. Mike's liquid culture adaptive premix this stuff sells on Amazon to a malt based liquid culture recipe that I have been using for the past five or six years. It works great. And the goal here is to see which liquid culture media produces higher myceliation rates and a clean liquid culture sample on agar before we use it on grains. But before we get into our head-to-head -head challenge, a brief history on liquid cultures. So researchers had long been experimenting with different fermentation techniques for mycelium. And it was a well-known fact that mycelium could not only survive submerged underwater, but mycelium could also thrive submerged underwater. But it wasn't until 2005 that a well-known user on a popular message board at the time was able to fashion the airport lids on the liquid cultures to make their benefits readily accessible to everybody. If you ask me and other researchers, the fashioning of these airport lids are the single greatest advancement in home mycology ever. And that is because you do not have to worry about pressure cooking your agar recipes and pouring agar plates. You can just inject your bag of grain or your grain jars with your high quality mycelium and the colonization of that grain begins. Liquid cultures also offer higher myceliation rates in comparison to agar plates because on agar plates, only the leading edge of the mycelium that grows out on the agar plate is the most viable. Whereas in a liquid culture, the entire liquid culture is leading edge mycelium. And what people like the most about liquid cultures is that liquid culture inoculations can be performed outside of aseptic environments. In other words, you can perform inoculations with liquid cultures anywhere. Now, let's go ahead and get to our head-to-head -head challenge. All right, guys, so here is a look at both of our liquid culture medias before we get to stirring them. Here is my very own do-it-yourself liquid culture media that I dubbed MPD. And here is... Dr. Mike's liquid culture media. And as you can see, Dr. Mike's liquid culture media is lighter in hue than my very own MPD liquid culture media. Both of these liquid culture medias were inoculated at the same time about five days ago. So I am being intellectually honest. I have nothing to gain nor lose from one of these liquid culture medias outperforming the other. 
I just thought that it would be cool to run Dr. Mike's Liquid Culture Media up against something that I have already been using just to see what the results would be. So it does look as if our old school MPD liquid culture recipe has produced slightly higher myceliation rates than Dr. Mike's adaptive liquid culture premix. And as you can see here, not only has our MPD jar produced slightly higher myceliation rates, but it has also produced larger three-dimensional constellations of mycelium. But I am not going to say that Dr. Mike's liquid culture premix is a subpar product because it did indeed produce pretty good results, just not better than the old school MPD results. Now that our jars are thoroughly myceliated, what we want to do now is test them for purity and cleanliness. We do this by inoculating a few test plates with mycelial samples from both of our jars. If anything grows out on the agar plates other than lush, vigorous white mycelium, then we know we have a contamination problem. And the jar that produces a contaminated test result will be wasted and discarded of. So we have taken test samples from each of our liquid culture recipes and here are the results in terms of purity and cleanliness. Here is Dr. Mike's test sample. And as you can see, guys, Dr. Mike's test sample produced a clean culture. And here is our MPD test sample. And as you can see there, it has also produced a clean sample. And this is what I like to do before I knock up grain with a liquid culture. And for you guys that are out there that are purchasing your liquid cultures from vendors, I highly encourage you guys to do the same thing. You should definitely be testing out your liquid culture syringes, even if they come from trusted vendors, because trust me guys, you don't want to waste money or waste time or any other resource on a liquid culture syringe that is already contaminated. I hope that you guys had as much fun watching this video as I had making this video and as a point to take away 
I would like for you guys to always be working on your own genetics, purchasing liquid culture syringes from vendors, whether they be trusted or not, is okay if you want to take that chance. But yet and still, I think that you guys should be working on your genetics at all times. That is what mycology is all about. And until the next time, I am the 5 a.m. mycologist signing off.